Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back. Thank you, Congresswoman Ross. I now recognize Mr. Roy from Texas for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, and I, look, I'm, I'm always interested when we talk about this subject that people just sort of gloss over the history and they start throwing uh, negative commentary towards the Shelby County decision. But, and I know there are a number of members in this room who were here uh, for the debate uh, in 2006, uh, leading up to the reauthorization of the Voting Rights Act at that time. I too was here as a staffer on the Senate Judiciary Committee. So I lived it. I lived through and read through all those volumes of papers, I went through all the analysis. And the fact is, as we put into the record in the additional views in the Senate uh, Judiciary Committee, the fact is the formula that was being followed was an outdated formula that was 40 years old. It was being based on data from 1965, 1968, 1972, and it was not updated for the time in 2006 when this was passed. And that's clearly what the court said. Yet my colleagues on the other side of the aisle want to suggest that somehow this is all about perpetuating racism, it's about perpetuating uh, the harms that clearly existed, as the distinguished gentleman from North Carolina made very clear in his review of the history of what the Jim Crow South actually looked like. And listening now to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, and I saw this happen and unfold in the Senate Judiciary Committee, where my friend Mike Lee was engaging with Senator Durbin, talking about Jim Crow 2.0. And I was just on the floor of the House of Representatives and we were talking about DC statehood and we're hearing the same thing about Jim Crow 2.0. And we're talking about comparing the historic wrongs that occurred that this country worked hard to reform and fix and that the Voting Rights Act was so critical in doing in 1965. We're being seen that compared now to passing laws trying to make sure our election system can be believed and trusted and that voter identification can be used, and that mail-in ballots have bipartisan agreement that they have higher rates of fraud, that maybe we should do something to ensure that we have trust and belief in those mail-in ballots. The record, when we put it in at the time in 2006, it is really important for people to note that when the Voting Rights Act was adopted, the average registration rate for black voters in the seven original covered states was only 29.3%. Today, that was 2006, the voter registration rate among blacks, for example, in covered jurisdictions is over 68%, higher than the 62% found in non-covered jurisdictions. There was examples where the counties in Florida, where there were covered counties and non-covered counties. Interestingly, we noted in the, case, in the uh, submission, while Florida has five counties that are subject to Section 5 coverage, none of these counties were implicated by the accounts of dis discrimination submitted to the record in 2006. Yet there were five non-covered counties in Florida that were pointed out in the list of accounts that was produced in the record in 2006. All of this is arbitrary. Everything that is being done is arbitrary, and that's why the court kicked it out. That's the fact, and that's what we know. Now what do we have? The, the, the legislation being put forward now for voting rights uh, uh, authorization and, and expansion counts any change to a state's voter ID law as a mark against it. 36 states already have voter ID laws. That's what's being done. It's very specific. It's very purposeful. That's what's actually happening. The voting Rights Act punished the states for improving the processes they use to clean up and maintain accurate voting rolls. They're making that an actual element and they're, and they're trying to compare that making sure that voting rolls, which have currently massive numbers of dead people registered, people who aren't in state, people who have moved, where you can't have faith in the voting rolls, somehow that is gonna be equi uh, made equivalent to the Jim Crow South for which the Voting Rights Act was so important in 1965. And it undermines the Voting Rights Act to suggest, as Senator Durbin did, that if you oppose pre Section 5 preclearance and you opposed the absurdity of basing Section 5 preclearance on 40-year-old data, that somehow you're against the Voting Rights Act. That's what happens. Those are the political talking points. And I would just ask my, uh, our witness and, and the Lieutenant Governor from North Carolina if you could uh, help me understand. Was the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to the United States Constitution passed and moved by Republicans or Democrats? Right, and was the movement to, be my put your microphone on, sir. Uh, was that would be Republicans. Was the move for the 64 Civil Rights Act and 65 Voting Rights Act led heavily by Republicans or uh, Democrats? That, that would be Republicans. And so as we sit here today, and as we're being accused by many of our colleagues on the other side of the aisle of wanting to somehow perpetuate the Jim Crow South, when in fact what we're trying to do is perpetuate laws that you can believe in that you've so eloquently discussed, do you see any merit in that whatsoever? 
Absolutely not. And just can I, if I have a moment just to add something, uh, you know, when you talk about that history, uh, that history is clear. Who stood on which side at every turn in history? It is clear. It's not even in dispute. And it's not in dispute now. What we want is integrity. We, we don't want power. We want integrity. We want the right thing to be done. We want to encourage citizens to be responsible. We want to have the best election system in the world. In the world. Third world countries, places like India where the poverty rate is staggering. They have to show that finger when they go vote. It's time that we modernize our election system in this country and stop playing all these silly games based on race. And please, stop using me as a black man as your pawn. And yes, I said it, to push your agenda. I'm sick of it. It happened a long time ago in this country and I'm tired Chairman, of it. Chairman, I would uh, ask that the witness answer the question. His time has expired. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I just have a unanimous consent request for, to insert something in the record. Unanimous consent to insert something in the record. Consent request. You've already said that we would we could enter that in the record. You said it in your opening, Mr. Chairman. What ha what changed? Mr. Johnson, can you hear me? So we're not going to insert Johnson. something in the record. So the Republicans the can't enter anything minutes. in the record. I'm just so the need chair, clarification. The chairman doesn't want us to be able to insert stuff in the record. Maybe in a few minutes, but not right now. Oh, because okay, because when I had my time closing, I didn't want to insert it at the time inserted when I spoke. Mr. Johnson, we're going to go in pro proper order. You're recognized for five minutes. Well, this is a great way to run a hearing. What's Impressive. What's wrong? 